Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is the next in a series looking at the financial implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. And in today's episode, I want to give you an update on the mobilization that President Putin called back in September. It's officially been announced that the mobilization for the time being has been closed. So Russia's now recruited all of the additional forces that it needs. So I'll give you an update on that announcement. We'll then have a look at what the impact of this mobilization has been for employment levels in the country and what that means for the economy of Russia. And I'll talk you through an economic theory called the multiplier effect, which looks at what the net impact of an additional $1 of income has on the economy overall. We'll have a look at the pay deals that have reportedly been offered to all of the mobilized troops, because we've got some more detail on that, and what the overall cost of that is going to be for the Russian economy over the next six months. We'll then talk about what's going on with regards to the actual payments of money to the mobilized troops, because there's been reports of strikes amongst the mobilized men. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the overall impact of this mobilization will be for the Russian economy over the course of the next three to six months, and what that's likely to mean for Russia as a whole. So before we get started on all of that, if I could ask you to give me a thumbs up at some point during this video, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I always include chapters in these videos, so if you don't have time to watch the whole thing, you can pick and choose what you'd like to watch. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below, where you'll find links to Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, YouTube, Super Thanks and Membership, and Amazon Shopping Links. And once again, I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody that has supported the channel. I really appreciate it. On the 21st of September, President Putin did a live televised address whereby he announced to the people of Russia that they needed to mobilize 300,000 additional men to go to Ukraine and fight. And this was the first time that Russia had called a mobilization of its people since World War II. This mobilization had been put together at short notice and details were limited, but people started receiving notifications the following day. So men were being conscripted. And although initially the announcement stated that the only people that would be called up were reservists, so people who'd formerly either served in the army or had signed up to be on the register, normal everyday people started to get the conscript papers and those individuals had to leave their jobs and their families and report for duty the following day. And at the same time as this was happening, it was leaked that the decree that President Putin had signed enabled Russia to conscript up to one million men. Many of the population of Russia were outraged by what was happening, and initially there were protests all across the country. However, the authorities came down heavily on these protests, people were arrested, and there were reports that some of those people arrested had been formally conscripted and were forced to go to Ukraine to fight. The net result of this was panic across Russia, and it was reported that over 700,000 people left the country as a direct result of this mobilization announcement. The mobilization effort lasted for around six weeks, and on the 3rd of November, Russia announced that the mobilization had been closed and that 318,000 men had been recruited. The impact of the mobilization has been devastating on Russia, both from a morale perspective and also from an economic point of view. Up until the point of President Putin's mobilization announcement, the war had been referred to as a special military operation and hadn't had an impact on the majority of Russians' lives. It was something that was happening thousands of miles away from where they lived and was only involving the military. However, news of the first mobilization since World War II changed the perspective entirely. Russian men were now at risk of being conscripted and forced to go to Ukraine to fight, and that meant that families' brothers and husbands and sons were at risk of disappearing and potentially never coming back again. And in the early days of the mobilization, there didn't seem to be a lot of quality control. A lot of older Russians were being called up. People who were unfit to actually go and serve in the military were being given conscription papers. And in the first couple of weeks, it was reported that over 50% of the men who turned up for the mobilization were sent home because they were simply not fit to be able to go to fight. And one of the reasons that so many people fled the country at the time is that Russians were worried that there was no actual end in sight for this war. So this mobilization, whilst it was limited to 300,000 people at that point, could actually be open-ended. And there was a possibility that the conscription numbers could increase into their millions. So the confidence and morale of the people was dented, but the bigger impact was the loss of people from the workforce. Firstly, we've got the actual men who've been conscripted. So 318,000 people have been taken out of their daily lives, out of their jobs, 
and been sent over to Ukraine to fight. So that means that you've got companies who are missing individuals, and that's going to lead to a reduction in productivity amongst all of those companies because they don't have people doing the jobs that they should be doing. And it's not easy to be able to replace them because you've got people who are fleeing the country, you've got people being mobilized, and people who are going into hiding. So they're actually disappearing from their local area because people started to go on the run to avoid being conscripted. So in addition to the 318,000 people who were actually conscripted, another 700,000 people left the country to avoid conscription. So that takes the total number of people who've been taken out of the workforce to over 1 million within a very short space of time. This was literally within a matter of weeks. And when you take into account the 500,000 people who left Russia at the start of the war, the so-called brain drain. So these are all the highly educated people, people who had senior jobs, people who are working for overseas companies who decided that they didn't want to stay in Russia. They would rather go and live abroad. So the total loss of people from the workforce as a result of the mobilization and the brain drain is now over 1.5 million. And this graphic, which shows the number of people employed in Russia, puts that into perspective. So you can see that in August, the total number of people employed was 72.6 million. However, that number actually decreased to 72 million in September as a direct result of the mobilization. However, the September figure only includes nine days after the mobilization announcement was made. Now, Russia haven't officially published the figures for October yet, but it's likely that the figure will now be closer to 70 million. And that means that the 1.5 million people that have been lost from the Russian workforce equates to more than 2% of the total amount of people employed. Now, before we go on any further, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Kamikoto Knives. Now, I like to cook, and when I'm cooking, I want a sharp blade to be able to prepare my food. And you won't find any knives sharper than these. They are made using high quality Japanese steel. They go through a 19 step process and are individually checked by the Kamikoto knife smiths before they're released. Now, these knives come in a very nice presentation box. I'll show you here. This is a three knife set. So I'll just open it up. I've obviously got two in my hand. And there's also a, another small knife. And these things are heavy. This box itself, is really heavy duty. So this would make a really lovely present. It's got the brand on the front of it and it has the settings inside. So the knives sit in it really nicely. You can store them away once you've finished using them individually. But the proof of the pudding for a knife is obviously what can it do? What can it cut? So I wanted to give you a quick test, but obviously I'm not in the kitchen. So I'm not gonna get out a tomato or a piece of meat. But I thought to start with, because I'm in the world of finance, Let's start with a piece of paper. Can this knife cut this piece of paper? Let's have a look. Well, that's pretty comprehensive. But obviously you're not going to use these knives to be cutting paper. So let's have a look at what it does to a banana. Pretty easy. Okay, let's have a go with the bigger knife, the nice chunky one, trying to cut my fingers off. So you can see here, it just slices so cleanly and easily. And this thing is really nice and heavy. It's got some nice weight in it. The handle is really nicely weighted. So if you're using this in the kitchen, you're gonna be able to cut through anything at all that you like. And this time of year, I'm constantly being asked for gift ideas. What can I buy you? And this would make a fantastic gift. And there are a whole lot of different types of sets on the website. And the great news is that Kamikoto have a variety of special offers on right now that you can check out on their website. But if you go to kamikoto.com forward slash Joe blogs, you'll get an extra $50 off any purchase that you make. So let's talk about the economic impact of the loss of 1.5 million people from your workforce. This table shows the average monthly wage in Russia over the last 12 months. And you can see that in August, which is the last available month of data that Russia have published, the average wage was 59,907 rubles. And if we take a ballpark exchange rate of 60 Russian rubles to one US dollar, that means that the monthly average wage in Russia is around $1,000. So if we multiply $1,000 by 1.5 million people, that means that Russia has lost around 1.5 billion US dollars of monthly wage income for all of those individuals. So on an annualized basis, that equates to around $18 billion. However, the situation is actually much worse than that for two reasons. Firstly, the majority of people who've left Russia as a result of the brain drain and also the mobilization call 
are higher educated people and also people who are in better paid jobs, senior management. And this chart shows the differential in the average monthly wage paid to employees by education level for October 2021. So these are the last available figures that I have. It's from a year ago. So clearly the figures would be higher today. So the impact will actually be greater. But if we look at these figures just for a comparative purpose, you can see that individuals that had professional qualifications and university degrees were paid on average 75,000 rubles compared to around 45,000 for everybody else, which means that those individuals were being paid around two thirds more than the average wage. So that means that potentially the actual impact on Russia's economy could be as great as $2.5 billion per month so that's obviously a significant chunk of change and will have a major impact on the Russian economy. But the situation is actually worse than that as a result of the multiplier effect. So before I go on to talk about the impact of the multiplier effect on the Russian economy, let's find out exactly what it is from our friends at Investopedia. The multiplier effect is an economic term referring to how an increase in one economic activity can cause an increase throughout many other related economic activities. There are several ways to envision this in the economy. Let's say Supertech Company introduces a new product with high sales. Supertech's success leads to growth for its raw materials suppliers. That in turn causes growth in machinery to extract more raw materials and that causes growth in yet other industries. This growth upon growth is the multiplier effect. Similarly, Supertech's new growth creates greater income for its employees. These employees spend a portion of their higher income on new things, such as restaurants, clothing, and cars. This generates new income for all the suppliers and employees in supporting industries. The accumulated new income is much greater than the initial new income. The multiplier effect is also at work when the banking industry lends money to customers. For example, if Mr. Gates deposits $100 into a bank, the bank must by law hold part of that in reserve, but can lend the rest of it back out. If it must hold 20% in reserve, it can lend out 80% or $80. That $80 may be spent several times, but eventually someone puts it in another bank. This bank keeps 20% or $16 and lends out $64. This cycle repeats several times. After all the depositing and lending, Mr. Gates' $100 could become several hundred dollars in deposits. So the multiplier effect is actually something that we've talked about a lot on the channel, but we haven't actually referred to it in these terms. I've talked about the ripple impact or the knock-on impact of when a country is expanding, it helps the rest of the world expand. And when a country is contracting, it has the opposite impact. And the multiplier effect basically explains the situation where if you earn $10 of income and then you go and spend that $10 in a store, that store has increased its income by $10. And that means that its profits are growing. It can pay all of its staff. And as it pays its staff, those people then go and spend money in other stores and buy products. And that helps the whole economy grow. And the multiplier effect basically explains the situation whereby if you've got an expanding economy, it's constantly growing because everybody's spending, money circulating, and it's just a growth environment. But you get the opposite impact when you have a contraction. And the reason that I'm highlighting the multiplier effect right now is that the loss of 1.5 million people from the workforce in Russia means that they've lost somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5 billion dollars of income every single month. And therefore, that money isn't going into the economy. Stores are not receiving those payments. Restaurants are not being paid. Goods are not being sold. And so the companies that would have benefited from those transactions haven't got that profit. Therefore, they can't pay their staff. And so the opposite of the multiplier effect is taking effect. We've got a contraction effect. So because that income has been lost from the economy, it's having a knock-on negative impact all the way through the Russian economy. So the actual impact of the loss of 1.5 million people or $1.5 billion is actually significantly greater than just that figure because the multiplier effect is working in reverse and we're seeing a big contraction.
Now, one of the videos I posted previously on mobilization talked about the fact that the mobilized troops didn't know how much they were going to be paid. They'd received the conscription paper, but there was no details in there in terms of the remuneration. And also there was reports that people who'd been sent to war actually weren't being paid at all. They hadn't had any money hit their bank accounts. So there was a lot of confusion and a lot of upset and a lot of very unhappy people, both in Russia and in Ukraine. And in order to appease everybody and to bring a state of calm back, Russia announced that it was going to pay 195,000 rubles per month to all of the troops that have been mobilized. Now, as we just saw, the average pay in Russia is somewhere in the region of 60,000 rubles. So 195,000 per month represents more than three times the national average. And just to remind you, the ballpark exchange rate is somewhere around 60 rubles to one US dollar. So 195,000 rubles per month equates to around $3,250. So given all of that data, you would think that everybody should now be happy and things have stabilized. However, reports are now coming out that mobilized troops are still not being paid. And there's a video circulating on social media of around 100 men who've been conscripted, so they're in a training camp waiting to be sent to Ukraine, who've officially gone on strike. Now, obviously, that's quite a brave thing to do, given the circumstances and everything that's going on. And I don't have any update as to what happened as a result of that strike. But I just thought it was interesting to share the information with you and to tell you that there's still a lot of uncertainty around the situation. Nobody really knows when payments are going to be made, who's getting paid and what's going on. Now, one of the really interesting story relating to the mobilization is that over the last few days, President Putin has signed a decree whereby Russia can now conscript convicted criminals. A new, law has, a new law has been signed enabling Russia to conscript citizens with unexpunged or outstanding convictions for murder, robbery, larceny, drug trafficking and other serious crimes under the criminal code of the Russian Federation. This makes it possible to mobilize hundreds of thousands of people who've been sentenced to probation or have recently been released from colonies who were previously forbidden to serve in the army. The only group of criminals exempted from the decree are those who committed sex crimes against minors, treason, spying or terrorism. Also excluded are those convicted of the attempted assassination of a government official, hijacking an aircraft, extremist activity and illegal handling of nuclear materials or radioactive substances. Now this is a really interesting development because in a previous video I reported upon the Wagner mercenary group who'd been recruiting convicts directly from prisons. They'd actually gone to prisons, rounded up all of the men who were still serving their sentences and offered them their freedom if they went to fight in Ukraine and managed to survive for six months. So it now seems that President Putin has decided that this seems like a good idea for Russia as a whole, that they would now also like to tap into this criminal culture and bring on board lots of people who've got convictions for really serious crimes and send them to Ukraine to fight in the war. Now, obviously, there's a moral question mark about doing this. But I think the bigger picture here is that clearly Russia needs more men. By signing this decree, President Putin has given himself the opportunity to be able to recruit more people in the future. And it would seem that that's the most likely intention and that's why he's done this. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think the mobilization effort that President Putin called towards the end of September has been one of the biggest disasters of this war so far, both from a morale point of view, an economic point of view, and a military point of view. To announce on live TV that 300,000 men were needed immediately to go to the fight in Ukraine was really bad PR. Firstly, it sent the message to the population that the special military operation was actually a war. Secondly, it told everybody that it was going badly because you don't need to call a mobilization if things are going well. The last time that Russia did this was World War II and obviously things were not going particularly well at that stage. So this sent shockwaves all across the country. And thirdly, it caused mass panic and a lot of people to actually abandon their jobs, their homes, their families and to leave the country. And the stories that circulated on social media immediately afterwards of older people, people who had disabilities being called up, people being taken out of their jobs who had no military background whatsoever caused further upset and panic. And from a military point of view, the mobilization wasn't well organized. 
People were called up who had no experience and they were given a very limited amount of training. 10 days was the estimated time for most people. Recruits were being asked to bring their own equipment with them. In the letters that they received, they were asked if they had night vision goggles, drones and other specialist equipment. So this is absolutely crazy. And ultimately, from a military perspective, Russia ended up with 300,000 men who were ill-prepared and ill-equipped who'd been sent over to Ukraine into an active war zone. So this wasn't just going up to do some military exercises and go through some drills and tick the box that you'd done three or six months service on a five-year rotation basis. This was actually going off to get involved in a fight. But the biggest single disaster from Russia's perspective of this mobilization is the economic impact. Russia is currently in a state of crisis. The sanctions that have been applied against Russia over the course of the last eight months are comprehensive and they are hitting the Russian economy on all fronts. They've got major financial sanctions, so a lot of the financial institutions are suffering badly. A lot of the companies in oil and gas and the other major industries in Russia have been sanctioned and are limited in terms of who they can trade with. They have lost billions, tens of billions of dollars of revenue over the course of this war. So Russia is on its knees right now, and it's also lost access to technology and specialist knowledge that it needs to rebuild the country. So it needs all of its best people to start performing. It needs to start producing its own technology to develop its own systems and products and be able to replace all of the things that it can no longer access from the West. So the last thing that Russia needs right now is for all of its best people to walk out of the door, to leave the country. But that's exactly what's been happening since the start of this war. Right at the start, we saw the brain drain. So all of the educated people, all of the people who had really good jobs, all decided to flee. That situation had calmed down by September, but the mobilization call led to an even bigger brain drain. Over 700,000 people decided to leave Russia. And the impact of that on the Russian economy is twofold. Firstly, there's the immediate loss of income. So those 1.5 million people who've left the country, they're no longer earning somewhere in the region of $2 billion per month. So that means that that money is no longer circulating in the economy. And as we talked about before, the multiplier effect means that the impact of that will actually be worse than just $2 billion. But it's not just the immediate loss of income. The longer term impact is going to be even greater because those people are no longer in their jobs. So the companies that they're working for will be less productive, they'll be able to develop less facilities and less products, and therefore it's likely that we'll see an increase in the slowdown of the Russian economy. So the net situation overall for Russia is really quite dramatic. So as I said at the start of this summary, I think the mobilization call made by President Putin at the end of September has been the biggest single disaster in this war so far. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.